Good evening. This is Sergeant X. There are some people to whom killing and cruelty have become second nature. To the Superman, pity and compassion are despised relics of an inferior and decadent people, and therefore not to be indulged in by members of the brave new order. It is natural, then, that all who oppose them meet with violence and murder, as you hear tonight in the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight, the Mystery Playhouse curtain rises on a different type of story than we presented thus far in this series. Tonight, you hear how some of the folks at home meet up with the enemy, meet and come to know him for what he is, a vicious product of a way of life that is not life, an apostle of hate and death and destruction. Listen now to Mr. District Attorney. As our case opens, it's early in a warm, sunny morning. And a little boy is walking along one of the highways leading from your district attorney's city. He's going swimming in the lake nearby. And he leaves the road to take a shortcut through the fields. Hey, mister. Mister, wake up. The man the boy sees is lying face down in the tall, sweet-smelling grass. He's wearing a torn shirt... A rough shirt, a shirt with two large letters painted on it, P.W. The little boy doesn't notice the letters. The little boy doesn't notice anything strange until he shakes the man and tries to turn him over. Mister, hey, mister, you better... Then he notices the thick, dark liquid oozing from the man onto his hand. Oh, golly. Help! Help! <laughs> Sure did a good job, Chief. Yes, I don't think you'd better look, Miss Miller. Yes. Uh, afraid it's too late, Chief. I... You all right? Yes, yeah, just a little dizzy for a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His face. Yes. Somebody must have beaten him with this fence rail. Some men finished the job with that rock. What? Look at the blood stains on. Oh, yeah. Well, no matter what was done to him, you know who he is or was. Who? His name was Hugo Myler. He was a Nazi lieutenant, prisoner of war. When he escaped from the army camp near here last night. Oh, I remember. The MP sent out an alarm. Yeah, well, they won't have much trouble finding him now. No. Well, that makes me feel a little better. What? Knowing he was a Nazi. Yes, but he was still a prisoner of war. Hmm? Our prisoner. Hey, yeah, that can cause an awful mess. Yes, you better tell We'd better work with the army and try to find the murderer before this turns into an international scandal. Try to find the murderer, Chief? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a sweet one. What have we got to work on? Well, we know he was killed sometime between 11 o'clock last night when he escaped and 9 o'clock this morning when he was found. Yeah, but nobody saw nothing. Nobody heard nothing. Nobody knows nothing. Chief, we ain't got a single clue. Yes, we have. What? It's lying right next to his left shoulder. Huh? What, is, what, what do you got, Chief? It's a button, Harrington. Huh? A brass button with a United States emblem on it. Chief. Why, well, hey, that's from a soldier's army jacket. An American soldier. Yes. Holy crow. How soon for supper's ready, Sarah? As soon as you're cleaned up. Well, I'm cleaned up now. Well, then it's ready. Sit down. <sighs> Use your napkin, Jess. <laughs> Them cows have me worried. Why? 
Well, they never give so much milk before in their whole lives. Well, maybe they know there's a war on. And it's rich milk, too. Just as rich. Uh, uh, sit still. I'll go. Visitors. Strange time of day for that. Um, hello. Hello. I'm sorry to bother you. Yes? I've been hitching all day, and... Could I have a drink of water, please? Why, of course, soldier. Come right in. Thank you. Yes, it's a young soldier. Oh, fine. Come on over and sit down, son. My name's Mika. Uh, how do you do, sir? My name's Schoonover. Andrew Schoonover. Mighty pleased to know you. Thanks. How about something to eat, son? Well, I... Now, now, don't tell me you're not hungry, because I can see you are. As a matter of fact, I am. Good. Here, let me have your jacket. Okay, sure. Here we are. There. Uh, that's it. I'll, I'll hang it up for you. Thanks. You on leave, Andy? Permanently. I just got my discharge papers. I was wounded. Oh, dear. You're just like my Tommy. What? Spots all over your jacket and a, a button missing. A button? Yeah, one of the brass ones. Sarah. Hmm? Uh, Andy here probably wants to clean up. Oh, of course. Well, you take him upstairs and I'll get out an extra setting. Yeah, this way in. Thanks. Don't be too long. I really want to thank you for this, sir. Say, you boys can't thank us for anything, ever. Uh, Andy. Yes, sir? Any of them cars that you got to lift in have a radio? Uh, no. Why? Lots of excitement around these parts. Nazi prisoner named Hugo Myler escaped from the army camp last night, and they found him this morning beaten to death. Really? Yeah. Seems they also found a button by his body. Button from a soldier's jacket. Watch that top step there. All right. I always mean to fix that and never get around to it. Yeah, they found a soldier's button. Lots of soldiers lose buttons. Lots of soldiers have... Stains on the jacket? Some do. Anyway, a button doesn't prove a soldier did it. No, no. But if it was a soldier, I wonder why he didn't just turn the Nazi over to the MPs. Maybe he was attacked. Hmm, maybe. Right in here. Maybe the soldier got frightened, lost his head, ran away. Yeah, maybe. Maybe what he needs is a good meal and a good night's sleep so he can kind of think it over in the morning. I'll get you a clean towel. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way. Yes? Was you figuring on going on tonight? I was, but... You're welcome to stay here. Thanks. If you're not afraid. Afraid? Well, with soldiers running around beating people to death. <laughs> no, I ain't afraid, Andy. All right, so the chief found a button, Miss Miller. So it was a soldier. Where are you going to find him? What, Harrington? Where are you going to look for him? There are thousands of soldiers around here. Soldiers on pass, soldiers on furlough. Soldiers just traveling through, soldiers... Ah, oh, where's the chief? Hmm? Huh? What? Hey, ain't you been listening to me? I'm sorry, Harrington. I was thinking how funny it is. What? War. Huh? We train our boys to kill, to kill Nazis. But if it was really a soldier who killed this Nazi, he isn't a hero, Harrington. He's a murderer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Miss Miller, you try to make sense out of war and you'll go crazy. Yeah. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Oh, good morning, morning, Chief. Chief. Well, did you see the papers, Chief? Yes, I saw them. Uh, Nazi propaganda has started already about what we do to our prisoners. It's funny the way it starts so quickly, right in our own country. Yeah. Anything in the medical report, Harrington? No, nothing we didn't know. And how about the MPs? They're as stumped as we are, Chief. Or maybe we're not as stumped as they are. No? At least we know what kind of a soldier to look for. We do? Yes. Yeah. What kind, Chief? A soldier who was just discharged from the Army. How hmm? do you know that? Well, actually, I'm just guessing, Mr. Uh -huh. but that button we spotted came from a soldier's winter uniform. Well, this is early September. Soldiers are still wearing summer uniforms. And most soldiers discharged from the army... Wear their winter ODs. Exactly. 
course, as I said, it's just a guess about this soldier. But there's another factor in this thing. What? Hmm? Now, the Nazi's body was on the side of the highway leading out of town. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, let's say that the soldier was waiting for a lift. Mm-hmm. The Nazi attacked him. The soldier lost his head and killed him in self-defense. Mm-hmm. What's your guess then, Chief? Well, there's no army center around here where soldiers are discharged. But the army pays the discharged man's transportation back to his hometown. Mm-hmm. So it's my guess that our soldier came from this city, but he was on his way out. Sounds like a good guess to me. Yeah, sure. Suppose it is right, though. What do we do now? Check with the army for the name of any soldier from this city who was discharged in the last few days. The last few days? Sure. Otherwise, he wouldn't still be in uniform. Oh, chief. I wish I had my hat on. Why? So I could take it off to you. Good morning. Good morning, Andy. I'm sorry I slept so late. Well, you must have needed it. Uh, how do you want your eggs? Oh, any way at all, Mrs. Maker. Yeah, well, sit down and start on your cereal. Thanks. <laughs> Sleep well, son? Yeah, like a log. <laughs> I heard you get up and go downstairs. Did you? Yeah. I was kind of restless. Yeah, so I figured. You going back to town today? No. Here's some coffee, Andy. I'll set it right here. Oh, fine. Thanks. Andy, uh, didn't you say you come from California? No. Why? Well, we was trying to get them spots off your jacket this morning, and some papers dropped out. Yeah? I know it was wrong, but I was just sort of curious to see what army papers looked like. Uh, Go on. Well, Andy, they say that you come from around here. I do. But, uh, since I've been in the army, my... My parents have moved to California. Oh. You said you was wounded. That, that's right. In Italy, sir. Oh, you fought in Italy? Uh-huh. Africa, too. That's funny. Why? Because the campaign ribbons on your jacket, they're from the South Pacific. You're mistaken. Am I? Why, Andy, you haven't touched your cereal. I don't think I want any. Oh, but you must I think eat I'll it. I'll go upstairs. Now, Andy, I'm going get... upstairs. Hugo? Yeah? Hugo? Yeah. That's his name, Sarah. Hugo Myler. Am I right? Yes. But that was the name of the escaped prisoner. That prisoner's alive, Sarah. It's simple to switch uniforms, especially after you beat a man's face in. Then the American soldier's dead? Yes, Mrs. Mickey. Oh, yes. What do we do? You'll sit down. Both of you. Now, see here. Shut up. We get... Yes. I give the orders here. Well, Miss Miller, that narrows it down to only one soldier who could have committed that crime. Andy Schoonover. Yes. If it's not him, well, then I'm barking at the wrong tree altogether. Hi, Chief. Oh, come in, Harrington. Thanks. Well, I got that report on Schoonover. Fine. What is it? This is his hometown, all right. Mm-hmm. He blew in the day before the murder, mm-hmm. and the night of the murder, yes, yes. he started to hitchhike over to Plainville to see his girl. Well? He never got there, and nobody's heard from him since. Yes. Yes, he sounds like our man. Yes, yeah, sure. I kind of wish it wasn't, though. Why not? Well, I just saw his family. The real nice people. Mm-hmm. Did you get the army report on him? Oh, yeah, sure, Chief. There you are. Thanks. It would be an awful shock to any boy's family. Well, oh. this report says he was decorated twice. Excellent character. Yeah, well, maybe he got too used to killing. Or maybe he was a little shell shot. Well, the army doesn't discharge shell shot men. It cures them. But with a record like that... And he got the Purple Heart, too. He was in the South Pacific when... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, what is it, Chief? Hmm? Is the body of that Nazi still in the morgue? Yes, it is. You call the coroner. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, Chief? We're going down to look at it at once. Your uh, 
your head, Mr. Meeker. Where's my wife? In the next room. What have you done to her? Sit down. What have you done to her? Sit down. She's fixing a suit of yours. She's what? I think I'd be a little less conspicuous as a soldier just now. You know? I'd rather you dirtied my clothes than the clothes of a soldier of the United States. You'll get along better, Mr. Meeker, if you just answer what I ask. Now, you're a dairy farmer, I gather. That's right. What do you sell? Milk. Did you drive it into the city in your car? No. It picked up here. When? Well, the man comes tomorrow morning. Don't cry. I separated you and your wife just to find out about this. You draw your answers checked with hers. It's a pity we don't have a baby you can beat up. Your wife will do. Now, when is the man coming to pick up the milk? This morning. Is the milk ready for him? Yes. When he comes, don't try anything. Because I'll be listening. With your wife beside me. I see. Now, let me have your gas ration book. I'm afraid of... It's uh, in your pocket, Mr. Meeker. Your wife very kindly told me. Yeah. Here. Thank you. I don't think you'll need it anyway. Why not? This morning, the man collects your milk. This afternoon, if anyone comes... You don't answer the door. Tonight, as soon as it's dark, I leave in your clothes in your car. Oh. Thank you so much, Mr. Meeker. Chief, uh, how much longer do we have to look at this body? Oh, we're through now, Harrington. Did you find what you wanted? Yes. It wasn't there. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But I haven't time to explain now. Harrington, this body was found on Highway 18, wasn't it? That's right, Chief. And what kind of country is out there? Well, farming, dairy farming, I think. Pretty lonely? Yeah. Well, that makes it tougher. But you and Miss Miller and I will have to check within a ten-mile radius of where this body was found. Yeah, check for what, Chief? For anything strange or suspicious. Well, like what? I don't know exactly, but something that'll give us a lead. Yeah, uh, to what? To a murderer hiding in a farmhouse. Yes? Yeah. What's he going to do with us when he goes? How'd you know he was going? Yeah, he wouldn't have had me fix the suit otherwise. What's he going to do with us, Jess? Probably tie us up. Now, don't worry, Sarah. Well, you're worried. No. Jess, after all these years, I know when you rubbed your neck that way, you're worried. I'm just trying to figure out something. Sarah, in a few minutes, Ed Hunnick will be along to collect the milk. Now, if there was some way... Some way of telling him. That German will be watching us. I know. But if there was something I could say that would make Ed suspicious, or something I could do... Mm, Ed don't talk much anyway. Never stays but a minute. I know. But if there was just something... I... What do you usually say to him? Well, just good morning and the milk's good. Or... Sarah. Yeah? There's more milk than ever this morning. Well? Now, if I say the cows are getting lazy... And Ed sees all them cans waiting. The German, he'll never know. Will Ed? If I look at him hard, maybe he'll know. He's got to know, Sarah. He's... Your milk collector's coming around the house. Open the door for him. All right. Remember, I'll be standing right here with your wife. Don't you worry about me, Jess. Just a minute. Morning, Ed. Morning, Jess. My cows must be getting lazy. Not much milk today. That's too bad. Everybody else has more milk than ever. Where's Sarah? Sarah? Yeah. She asked me to pick up some yarn in the city for her. I lost the sample. Oh. Well, Ed, uh, Sarah, she ain't feeling so good. She's, she's in bed. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I uh, guess the yarn can wait till tomorrow. She may be worse tomorrow. Huh? What's the matter with her? Ed, she... Yeah? Just... Just cold, Ed. 
Well, you doctor up today. She'll be all right. Yeah, I'll doctor. See you, Jed. Yeah, see you, Ed. Behave very well, Mr. Maker. You think so? Cheer up. As soon as it's dark, I'll be out of your house. How far do you think you'll get? Exactly as far as I want to. Say, you've got a lot of confidence. In American stupidity. I was born and brought up here before I went home to Germany. I know Americans. Well, if you do, you know you ain't going to get away with this. You are stupid. Only three people know Andy Schoonover is dead. Only two people can spread my description all over the country. It's very simple. Simple? Do you mean... Yes. I mean I'm going to kill both of you. <gasps> Tonight. Just before I leave. <laughs> And you didn't notice anything out of the way, Mr. Hunnicker? No, sir. I wish I could help you folks, but I didn't see a thing. Well, we better let the rest of them go until morning, huh, Chief? Yes, it's getting dark and everybody will be going home to supper. Well, this should be the district, though. Well... If I hear anything, I'll let you know. All right, thanks, Mr. Hunnicker. Oh, uh, just one thing. Yeah? We visited some of the farms in the neighborhood this afternoon. And three of the farmers weren't home. Were John Legman one? Yes. He's gone into the city for the day. What about Bob Warshaw? He's gone to visit his boy at Fort Riley. And Jess Meeker? Well, he's got a pretty big place. He might have been up in the South 40 when... No. What? What? No, I seen him this morning. He, hmm? he said his wife's sick in bed. He, he was going to doctor her up today. He should have been home unless... All right, uh... never mind. Harrington, Miss Miller, let's get him going. <laughs> Son's gone now, Jess. Yeah. He won't do it though. Why not? He can't. He couldn't. Jess, he just couldn't walk right in here and. Sarah, Sarah, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with all of us? Why? What's it going to take to make us understand what these Nazis are? But Jess, he just. Jess. Don't you be afraid now. I am. Give me your hand. Oh, Jess. At least. We're together. Well, who's first? You, Mrs. Meeker? No. Don't you touch her. I... Down and shut up. Come, Mrs. Meeker. I think I'd better. I think you'd better put up your hands, Hugo. You're under arrest. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Hugo Myler was convicted of murder, and he's going to get the punishment he deserves. Yeah. Hey, Chief, what made you suspect Schoonover and not Myler had been murdered? Well, like you and Miss Miller, I couldn't really believe a soldier of our army would kill a German and run away. Then, when I was going over the report on Schoonover, I noticed he'd been awarded the Purple Heart. Uh, his right arm had been peppered with shrapnel, hadn't it? Yes, which meant that arm was very weak. And it would have been hard for him to beat up a man. And then when we examined the body, I saw wound marks on the right arm. So I knew that Schoonover was dead and that Myler had killed him. Chief, how did you know Myler would hide out in a farmhouse? Well, I figured there'd be blood on the uniform, and Myler wouldn't want to go very far in that. So I knew he'd get away from the scene of the crime and then stop someplace to get new clothes. Well, when we found that Meeker really was home but hadn't answered the door... Then I knew where Myler was. And so, with the case of Hugo Myler, alias Andy Schoonover, a closed issue, the curtain falls on Mr. District Attorney, tonight's presentation in the Mystery Playhouse. And now, to the green room, where our players are rehearsing the next performance. Follow me, please. Come. What's 
business is it of the police? It's the duty of the police, Lieutenant Derby, to investigate any death when they receive inquiry. But who made inquiries, Mr. Queen? Here's your coffee, Mr. Ellery. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, one of the people in this room, Major Cronenby. Huh? Blenheim, that was you, wasn't it? I swear I'll kill you if you start mudslinging rumors again, you clothhead lush. Nobody can say that to me, Jeremy. Hey, just Lieutenant remember, Lieutenant lady Blenheim. president. Blenheim, you started the columnist calling Crony here a fortune hunter. Now you're at it again. Want to come outside, or will you take your beating here? Jack, Blenny, stop it now. Shush. Who are you shushing, Crony? If you don't stop shouting, Blenny, you'll never set foot in my house again. Your house, Cronenry. Leader's house, you mean. Get out. You asked for it, Major. Every do something. Separate him. I guess I'll have to throw you out, Blenny. You and what army? Blenny, put that bottle down. Oh. Every. I'll see what you did, Blenny. That'll teach that six foot four inches of bluff not to try to toss me out of Leader's house. Crony. Crony, you're all right. Let him, you may have killed him. You know he's got a fracture from that spill when he had to bail out in Germany. Mr. Harris! Crony! Mr. Harris! Crony, are you all right? What Major Cronenby's been hurt, Amanda. Get some ice and a stack of towels. Don't move in, Lieutenant. It's for you, Mr. Blenheim. He had it coming to him. If you ask me, he did have something to do with Leader's drowning. It smells, Blenheim. Cronenby was wonderful to my sister, and you know it. You never got over your jealousy when he got back from the war and... He'd have picked him instead of you. Why, you dirty dog trying to insinuate... If you don't mind, you two, your friend here is in pretty bad shape. One side, Queen. Lenham, what was that you just called me? Hillary, he's pulled a gun. Lenham, watch yourself. Lieutenant, drop that. Pull a gun on me, will you? Derby, you're bluffing. Yeah? Well, here's a bluff for Clone. And another for Lita. You killed him, Lieutenant Derby. Just tapped him with a butt. He'll live. Put down that gun, Lieutenant. I mean it. Okay, Mac. Have a drink. Oh, thank you. Where's Amanda? Blenheim. Blenheim, wake up. Okay. I'll have one. Funny thing, Queen. You're showing up tonight, I mean. Here's the lieutenant. Come on, come on. Come on, Lieutenant. I was come on, thinking Blenheim. of calling the cops myself, but I didn't have proof. Sorry I was so rude before. My sister was a crack swimmer, Queen. She didn't drown. Someone killed her. And Blenheim, who's our investment broker, was up to his neck in debt. Excuse me, I... I feel terrible. Hillary, now he's going to pass out. Good grief, Amanda. The towel, the ice. No sleep since sleep. Sit down, Lieutenant. Now put your head way down. Between your knees. There. Don't fall on the floor. Oh, he's going to. That makes three out, Ellen. Three out? Well, Nikki, I guess the next inning is mine. <laughs> That was the start of our next performance in the Mystery Playhouse. And a pretty rugged one, too, wasn't it? Ellery Queen, the famous gentleman detective, finds himself in the middle of a lot of bad feeling when he receives a call to come out and investigate the apparently accidental death of a young heiress. But that, of course, isn't even half the story. The rest will have to wait until next time when we present Ellery Queen and the adventure of the Cafe Society case. This is Sergeant X cold and all, closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.